fellowship Amen. in this place. Amen. 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 I need to uh, do just a couple of things before we move into uh, the Word. Uh, let me start uh, by going back, uh, if you all don't mind, from last week. What a time we had in this place. Amen. 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 Certainly, I, I want to acknowledge uh, Minister Fox. Amen. Uh, Amen. Who, Amen. As Reverend Edwards said, he will rock the box. Amen. That's exactly what he did. He sure enough did rock the box to those who have been installed to Elder James H. Tanks III. Amen. Amen. In absentia, Reverend uh, Elder Dr. Stephen D. Stewart. <laughs> and of course, Reverend Carlton L. Edwards. Reverend uh, Edwards. Henrietta calls him CLE. <laughs> Those are his initials, Carlton L. Edwards. And so we thank him for his lovely wife, Carla. Quite a few of my mothers in here. Um, Betty's in the house. Amen. 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 My right, your left mom, Shirley. Amen. Is in the house. Amen. Amen. Of course, we have the Prince. Amen. Tori, who is here. Amen. Amen. So glad to see you are with him. Amen. Amen. Tim and I are fighting over his hair. Amen. The moment you cut it, we will, we, Tim says, if there's anything left, I can have a couple of locks. Amen. Amen. We thank God for you. Good to see you, Amanda, Christine, and all of you this morning. Amen. Marcel and Keith, so good to see everyone uh, in the household. Uh, the Lord. Amen. 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 Shall we stand? I don't want to hasten too long. Let me, uh, while you're standing, uh, do a couple more things. I want to thank Jahari. Uh, as always. Amen. 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 I don't know if you all noticed, but while we were doing the installation and the ordination, she changed the slides. Yeah. Uh, the screens were changed yeah. to who was being installed, to yeah. who was being ordained. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I didn't notice it until the pictures I had saw on Facebook, uh -huh. which leads me to my next moment. Thank you, Jade, Hillary, yeah. amen, yeah. for the photographs, yeah. for the pictures you all took. Uh, for uh, Dr. Banks uh, for operating the equipment as well. Amen. 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 And let me, let me share this with y'all. I had a, a time, uh, Carlton, trying to get uh, Minister Fox's sermon on YouTube. Yeah. I don't know if it was Satan or my ineptness yeah. to figure out the technology, but every time I tried, it would shut off. Oh, All week. <laughs> All week. Until Friday, I persisted, and this thing's going to run. And sure enough, it loaded up, and then Earl reminded me that he had not seen it. So someone's looking for it. Amen. Amen. That's how important what you all do uh, for us in this setting. To our finance team in the back and to the entire membership, we want to thank you all so much for being so supportive. All right, let us move uh, into the Word of God. I would simply ask that you all keep, uh, uh, I am having a tough time with her name. It is Delion. Delion. Delani, uh, Chicago and Paul's uh, daughter, uh, who has been birthed, and then keep Sister Cherie Grayson uh, in your prayers as well, and Mom Doris Hamilton. All of them are standing in the need of prayer, and the entire Roddy Madry uh, family. Amen? Amen? Amen. One day it could be us who is in the need of prayer. All right, Jahari, if you would give me a, a kick, and I can get this slide moved. Uh, if you'll stay there, that's fine. I want to thank you. You can just leave that right there. I think I'm assured now. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus and the power of your spirit, we come now in this moment, in this hour, that you have ordained that your word would go forth. We thank you for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard thus far. For JP, Judah praise. God, only, only them can do what they do ministering the songs, uh, not for our entertainment, but for your listening pleasure. The songs are all about you, Amen. Father, that you will be glorified. We are just simply edified by what we hear. Thank you for those voices that you mingled together. 
bless those homes individually and collectively for Derek Grayson and for Sandy Wilson and Henrietta Fields and for Teresa Roddy, yes. even though she's at, and not with us at this moment, but for those who take their time and practice and rehearse, and for those who help in that effort, we say thank you so much. Now, Father, we ask that you would hide us behind your cross, that you would keep us under the dripping of your blood, that you would write across my heart and my mind the words that are found in the gospel according to John, 12th chapter, 21st verse. Sir, we would see Jesus. We ask that you lift him up, that he would draw. Someone needs a savior. Someone needs to be reclaimed as a backslider. And someone needs residence with you or a church home or any church home that is Bible-believing, Bible-teaching, and Bible-living. It's in Christ's name and for his sake we pray. Together we say amen. 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 If you turn your attention to 2 Corinthians, the 8th chapter, verses 9 through 15, I shall read from the King James Version. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. And herein I give my advice, for this is expedient for you, who have begun before, not only to do, but also to be forward a year ago. Now therefore perform the duty of it, that as there was a readiness to will, so there may be a performance also out of that which you have. For if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man hath, and not according to that he hath not. Mm -hmm. For I mean not that other men be eased and you be burdened, but by an equality that now at this time your abundance may be supplied for their want, that their abundance may also be a supply for your want, that there may be equality. As it is written, he that had gathered much had nothing over, and he that had gathered little had no lack. Amen? Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Most High God. In an effort to continue in our series of stewardship, uh, previously we had talked about time, we had talked about talent, uh, this morning we're going to talk about who am I treasure. Who am I treasure? Find a neighbor and say, neighbor, who am I treasure? Look across the aisle and real loud say, neighbor, whoa, neighbor, who am I treasure? Everybody's awoke, even torn to lift his head up. Amen. 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 I, I want to ask a question this morning. Uh, is it all right if I impose uh, an interrogatory uh, into this atmosphere? I, I just need to know, uh, Bob, is it all right if I submit uh, this query, Jordina, into this setting? Uh, EMJ, I have a question, uh, Elder Brown, that has been on my mind for a long, 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 long time. Long, long, long time. Why is it hard, difficult, Cheryl, and nearly impossible, Christina, for some people, Sharita, to give or share their things, to share their stuffs, stuffs. And to share what is in their possession with someone else who is in need. Why, why is it so difficult, Keith? Why can it be so hard, Marcella, for some people not to want to help somebody else who is in need? Let me qualify it. Who could be helped immensely by just simply they sharing with what they have. When we were children, or we witnessed other children, who for whatever reason or reasons, who had a difficult, who had a hard or a stubborn time in their lives, 
Watch this, Mom Ethel. They refused to share or give other children something they had and the other child was in need of, even if the child asked for it. Uh, you, you, you may have seen young children, or you may have been one of those child on either side of the coin, that, 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 that you see children with plenty of toys to play with. And yet when a child comes and just takes one of the other toys, why are they so territorial at that age? Yeah. That they don't want to share and they'll snatch it back. There, they'll kick and scream and cry uh, and fight to hold on to their toy when they have many more toys that they can play with. Ah, right. uh, in the black top jungle, Reverend Edwards. <laughs> Brick City, Elder Tanks. Uh, we call it the Dome, aka the Projects. <laughs> Where I grew up, when we were children, uh, when we had something, uh, listen carefully, church, we had to place a disclaimer on our thing or other children who wanted a piece of it or wanted to play with it automatically could do so. I'm just talking about where I'm coming from. Okay. Uh, I grew up in a moment where you had to have the disclaimer, uh, uh, Jay, in place. Uh, it went like this, Arnett, no humps, no share, no dirty underwear. <laughs> I don't know what the underwear had to do. Nobody wants to share dirty underwear anyway. But when you step out of the corner store and you just spent your nickel yeah, no and a whole bag of candy, you had to claim that disclaimer. Because mm -hmm. if you didn't, they automatically had a share and a piece, Earl, and could dip into your bag, yep. and you had to share it with them. I know back home they're cracking up right about them. So, so, so if you didn't declare it, you didn't say it loud enough, and it wasn't broadcast, Gigi, other children, I got to repeat it, were able, to, were able uh, 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 to share, and you had to give them some of the candy uh, with them uh, as soon as you stepped outside. It could have been your house, the corner store, or wherever you came from. And have you ever noticed Sometimes it's hard for children to play together. Even the big kids have a tough time sharing their toys with others. Uh, they become territorial, uh, Carlton, and refuse to share or give their toys. And this is not a uh, guilt trip. Uh, I'm going to encourage you in this message uh, for other child or children to play with uh, when they have plenty of other toys they can play with. You can ask the same question of the big children. With some adults, the same is true, Deacon Banks. <laughs> However, let me qualify, Jay uh, and James, that, that with the children, uh, this isn't about uh, uh, an emotional attachment uh, that adults have. Uh, the factor uh, in society, uh, Janice, uh, listen to this, there is the 1%. There is the middle class that is slowly disappearing. Mm -hmm. And then there are the have-nots. Mm -hmm. uh, the answer to the question varies in the context of the, of the uh, perception of an individual. For the adults not only lack empathy, like children. See, children just don't have empathy. They don't understand when someone's in need. All they know is, this is mine. But with an adult, Derek, uh, it, it's about an emotional attachment. See, children have no empathy when it comes to sharing their things. As adults, Karen, they, they have emotional attachment to their things, and sometimes it's hard for people to share their things with other people. Uh, they think others, adults think others may lose it. They may break it. Or you know how it is when you give somebody something and they don't bring it back? Uh, these are precious things to them. And, and, and Marcella, there's an emotional bond with these things that is given to them uh, by their close one. That, that's, uh, they feel insecure when it comes to sharing. It's the reason why they're insecure when they share or give things to others. So God, in his infinite wisdom, has turned our attention to the text this morning to help us understand, help us comprehend, and demonstrate from his word, who am I, 
treasure. Here are the definitions. The first one is the act of bestowing as a gift, conferring or imparting. The second is to present voluntarily and without expectation or expecting compensation. Let me read that again. To present voluntarily and without expecting compensation. To put into the possession of another for his or her use. Here are our synonyms, dispersing, conveying, supplying, transferring, furnishing, imparting, presenting, granting, endowing, donating, yielding, bequeathing, distributing, presenting, I got that twice, for a reason, contributing, handing out, remitting, and offering. Here are our quotes for today. When God blesses you financially, don't raise the standard of your living. Raise the standard of your giving. Mm, there you go. God gives us things to share. God doesn't give us things to hold. You make a living by what you earn it. You make a life by what you give. Quote, unquote. A life of purpose is a life of service. Given to others with total and unconditional love is the key. Frank Argazi. When we give, it is not about ourselves. It is about giving glory to God. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but shall have everlasting or eternal life. And here we are at our takeaways from our text. But first, let me give historicity while you stare at those that will write them down if you're keeping score. The history of the text, church, is that Paul is writing, uh, Amanda, the second epistle or the second letter to the church at Corinth. Uh, uh, he is writing to the Corinthian church the most detailed passages, you need to hear this, on giving found in the New Testament. Tim Paul, in this body of writing, chapters 8 and 9, which are too long for me to preach the sermon, you would walk out on me. All right, somebody caught it. Uh, the primary reason, Marcella, is to address the false teachers uh, in Corinth, listen, church, who were suggesting Paul was pocketing the offerings and the contributions that were designated for the poor believers in Jerusalem. God just said something. Mm -hmm. uh, he was accused of pocketing the money. Sister Fuse, you're right. Not that he was, but he was accused of pocketing the money that was designated for poor believers in Jerusalem. You see, the church at Corinth, uh, 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 Mom Betty, had a willingness to give, but not had done so based upon the hearing of those suggestions. In other words, once they heard that Paul, uh, it was slightly believed, was, was pocketing the money, Karen, they decided not to give. Amen. And you and I will probably feel the same way. Uh, it sounds like today, doesn't it? There are too many preachers, CLE, who are pocketing the contributions, pocketing the offerings uh, that are designated for those in need and for the ministry of the kingdom of God, and they're using it for their personal gain. All right, that's not deep enough, Pastor. They're living in mansions. Wearing $2,000 suits, yeah. driving cars that cost $300,000. Right. And they had the nerve, Jahari, they had the audacity, and a couple of them have the gall to ask their members to give more money so they can fly in private jets and private helicopters. And the excuse, now let me qualify, the lying excuse they give is that they want to get the word out. Well, I got news for you lying preachers. Yeah. Guess what? Jesus walked everywhere he went. And the word of God over 2,000 years is still spread all across the world. We got a praying church today. Come on, God. Come on. Preachers, keep your paws and your pockets out of the offering and giving. I say give a ring. You heard that. <laughs> that is earmarked 
that is designated for the furtherance of the gospel and the uplifting of God's kingdom. Preachers who know better and do better, they demonstrate, watch for the introduction, they demonstrate empathy. They understand there are those who are less fortunate than they are. They demonstrate the emotion, uh, attachment, that compassion is on the menu all of their lives. That you have to meet the needs of those who are, are without. And finally, they are empowered by the Holy Spirit, Sandy. That's why they know where the offering should go. Let me make this PSA real quick when I first came back. Elder Marshall said to me, you don't need to know nothing about the finances of the church. <laughs> that sounds rough, don't it? Don't that sound tough? Yeah. But you know right on that, he's right. right. My assignment is to preach the word, Come on. to teach the word. Come on. They can handle the finances. Any preacher who spends too much time concerned about offering, Come on. All right, let me go on. Well, some preacher going to turn me off. They don't want to hear me no more. So leading up to our text, y'all ready to roll now. Paul has now turned his attention to the second reason for him writing the Corinthians. Uh, him, yet he has need to collect money for those who are being persecuted. Listen to this who are poor and who are in need. So he pins for the Corinthians and for us this morning, if you're in verse 8, just look at verse 1 and you can just follow along as I get closer to the text. Paul lifts up the example of the churches at Macedonia. And there's a reason why Macedonia and the churches there are important. It's because what Paul doesn't say, and an extra study will reveal to us, that Macedonia themselves, uh, 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 Paul does give it a little bit of a hint, but he says they are in great trial and affliction. Watch the text, verse 2. And out of the abundance of their joy. So that said something to me when I sat down and looked at the text. And the Spirit spoke to me that even though Macedonia was up against it, even though they had great affliction, even though they were poor themselves, if you're reading the law, they still gave Amen. based on their heart, which was full with an abundance Amen. of joy. Amen. I just said something. You Amen. missed it. Yeah. They still gave. That's right. They still gave. That's right. Even though their backs were against the wall, and it's eight times eight, yeah. and can't understand the math, they still gave. Paul in verse 1 is alerting the Corinthians with a new subject. He says, moreover, he's going to talk about something different. He desires to make known the grace of God bestowed upon the churches of Macedonia. They had demonstrated extreme liberality in their giving. That says something that whenever the grace of God is active in your life, that means you can still have joy no matter what is going on, no matter who is picking at you, no matter what storm, trial, tribulation, as long as you have joy. Now let me qualify this and get something real straight. Yeah. I'm not talking about jumping up and down and hollering at and from, no, no. Come on. The joy I'm talking about is, yeah. Marcella, even in the midst of everything that I'm going through, if I just stay in Christ, Come on. I'll have the joy that'll get me through the trials and the tribulations. Come on, Reverend. Come on, set it up. Paul says, closer to our text. Their giving was done even though, Henrietta, in spite of and against Jordina, some tough odds. They were in a great trial of affliction. Yet, in the abundance of their joy. Check that prepositional phrase out. In the abundance of their joy. Then they were in the midst of whatever was going on. That says something to somebody this morning because everybody's got something going on. Oh. They remained in joy. And even in their deep poverty, their own poorness and weakness, they still gave out of the abundance of that which flowed freely the grace of God. Amen. So the record declares, I got to go, Jahari, the record declares they were beyond their power. See, it's beyond our power when you give like that. Yeah. All right. Oh, I got Karen, just one cheerleader. <laughs> Get your pom-poms out, boo. They did this willingly, on their own and from their own volition. Yeah. Listen, listen, you, you, listen to this. They actually, Amanda, 
watch this girl, they begged Paul to participate. They begged him to participate in the collection and offering for the saints at Jerusalem. This is being done in the form of fellowship, the text says, and ministering to other saints. Even though they were poor and in poverty and in their weakness, they begged Paul to help others who were in need just like they were. Amen. Amen. They are not as we, uh, 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 as we hope for. Listen to this. Because of their own needs, watch this, they first gave themselves, watch the text and how it works. They gave themselves to the Lord. See, this type of giving ain't going to happen from the flesh. Come on now. No, it's not going to happen like that. The text says it came uh, first because uh, they gave themselves to the Lord and to that to the will of God. When those two are in the mix, then you can give and I can give from the circumstance of whatever is going on because I care enough to meet somebody else's need. Two doors from our text, Henry, and the Bible says Paul desired they had begun. This is the Corinthian church. It's going to get deep in a couple of minutes. The Corinthian church, who had started a year ago, Tim, they had promised to give. But, 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 but the false teachers were teaching about Paul, which was a lie. They were now a year, Mom Betty, and still haven't given anything. Now, Corinthian is a wealthy church. They have a lot of resources from which they could have given. But Paul says in the recording of the word that over a year EMJ had passed and they still had not given anything. I'm not going to make somebody feel guilty. <laughs> Just preach the word. They promised Come on. over a year ago mm -hmm. to give. Mm -hmm. But they had not done yet. And when you take the contrasting that Paul does against with the Macedonians, Paul has set them up for them to have an example, G, that you can see that Macedonian and the church there are given out of their weakness and their poverty, but you all through your richness and your thickness mm. haven't given anything. Mm. Paul says, next door to our text, Jordina, this is important. Paul says this is not a commandment. There is no legal stipulation that regulates the believer's giving. Come on. Can I say something for a minute? And finance team, you want, somebody may have to talk, me, talk to the finance team about this, what I'm about ready to say. That the giving is based on the attitude of your heart. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. So you, you can't give what you don't have. That's right. And where I come from, let me just pause for a moment. In my growth, in my growing culture, our bishops with, with, with an offering had a funny way of raising money which I detested. They, if you had $100, they'd ask you to come on down first. If you had $50, you get behind $100. And if you have $20, and all the rest of y'all just stay where y'all at. The ushers are coming. I'm not lying, I'm telling you. I'm just testifying to it. But Paul says, I understand if you don't have it. But I also get the fact that if you give what you have, and I like these two words, if your commitment is solid and you are consistent, I wouldn't care if you gave five dollars a month. Come on. But do it on a monthly basis. I know the finance team are rolling their eyes at me right now, but I gotta look over this way. But it's better than giving nothing at all. It's better than giving one month and then missing an action for six months. This is a money sermon. No, it's not. You'll see it to close. So here I am. Who am I? Treasure. Paul says it's not a commitment or commandment. I'm sorry. There's no legal stipulation, Marcella, that regulates the believers given. But think about the zeal of the Macedonian church, Corinthians, that they gave out of their poverty and the trial of affliction. And from that attitude of, of fellowshipping and ministering to those in need, they demonstrated their love, their active love, and they gave by their sacrificial giving 
to others and prove, here it is, they prove the sincerity of their love. So here I am at my first takeaway from my text. Good time. You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Verse 9. You know. Paul says in the first 1a or 9a, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. You can read the rest of the text and I'll try to exegete in a moment. The record declares, Paul says in the Greek, gnosko. That means you're aware of it. You feel it. You've resolved in it. You can speak of it. You've experienced it. You are sure of it. And you understand and comprehend the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Watch this, Jordina, that in his graciousness, in his manner, in his act, in his divine influence, upon the heart and the reflection through his life, Baba, his benefit, his favor, his gift, and his redemptive love was given freely to all of us who were under the curse and the penalty of sin. You all understand that. He says, you know about that, Corinthians, that though he was rich, he had everything. The reality is, and some people don't believe this, Marcella, but the reality is the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and all of them that dwell therein. This all belongs to him. He was the creator. He's the sustainer. His entire creation belongs to him. Carlton, I hear the word, to you I belong, I'm not my own. I give myself away. When you speak of being rich, uh, this is beyond the Bronsons and the Gettys and the, Come on. all the others who claim they're million, billion, billion, and, and all of them. Jesus is the true epitome of rich. Right. This is, he is the richest of all. Yes. Jesus did not use this richness to win people to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now you missed something. Mm -hmm. He did not use this to spare himself the cause either. It was his. It already belonged to him. But he lived as if nothing belonged to him. Yes. The text says, I gotta go. Yet for your sakes, in my sake, yes. the Greek word is humus, because we were the object of his love. I had to sit down with Jordina. I started crying when I wrote this. That he left glory yes. for my sake. Yes. You wanna think about that. Yes. As wretched as I was, as sinful as I am, that God, Jesus, would give up glory, Amen. come down and have nothing. What do you mean, Pastor? The word says, Christina, foxes have holes and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place. <laughs> that poor. To lay his head. He laid aside the independent exercise of all his divine Bobby Brown prerogatives. Yes. He left his place with God, took on human form and flesh, and died on a cross like a common criminal for our sake. We were the object of his love. Yes. Oh, Gail, that blew my wig backwards. Even at his death, even at his death, Marcella, he didn't even have a tomb. The tomb was borrowed, and they laid him in a borrowed tomb. That's how poor he became. The Macedonian giving was an example of sacrificial love. Jesus also is sacrificial, but he is the hookup. His love is supreme love, the ultimate sacrifice, that through his poverty, his weakness, we might become rich. Amen. All right, point number next. Oh, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verses 10 through 12 says, finish what you started. Amen. Amen. Mom, Shirley, finish what you started. <laughs> oh, Lord. Finish what you started. Paul, watch this, Sean. In these verses, uh, this is deep, Johari, offers his advice. His thoughts, his guidance, Paul is diplomatic, his guidance, his counsel, his suggestions, his opinion related to the Corinthians given. Paul, Georgina, has an expectation that when it was the Corinthians' desire, I'm going somewhere, 
And their intention, uh, uh, J.T. Tanks III, over a year ago, Paul says, I have an expectation that you started to give, but for over 360 some odd days, you haven't given, but my expectation is, and my advice is, that you would love to give. Amen. Amen. Paul is now asking them, watch this church, to follow through. It's a Marvin Gaye moment. Let's get it on. It's time to honor your commitment. This is a Nike moment. Just do it. Where there is a willing mind, there must be first a determined heart. In other words, if the heart isn't determined, the mind will never be convinced to carry through what the heart desire. Oh, I there it is. Talking Come on. Yeah. Hook it up. What the heart desire is. There must be a made up heart and a willing heart and a made up mind. God is first concerned with the attitude of the individual. God is never, ever about the precise, uh, precise amount that one gives. Let me make that clear. Yeah. Now, that don't mean that I have it and I'm just going to give what pastor and preacher just said. Because you're giving in the wrong attitude. And if you keep reading in chapter 9, he's talking about you're, you're, grudging, you're grudgingly giving. That's right. Because God loves a cheerful giver. Oh. Elder Barry, you set it up, bro. With the offering, what you said, it made sense. God is first concerned with the attitude. What's your attitude? And if your attitude, Henrietta, let me qualify it. If your attitude is based on the grace of Jesus Christ and what he went through, that he became poor, he left richness for our sake, then the attitude, yeah. if he gave up all of that, yeah. we should have no problem yeah. giving. Pastor, you're in my wallet. You're in my purse. I'm going to get deeper than that. It's, it's deeper than that. It's never about the precise amount one gives. It's based on what one has and, and gives proportionately. God never expects anyone to give what it is they don't have. Let me educate some folks. The reason why folks got caught up with Jim Jones in Guyana's town. Because nowhere in the word of God does, does he tell you to sell everything and follow somebody. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, I'm going there. That's right. And, and, and necessarily, you know, you'd have to be some, some kind of flippant individual or don't know the scriptures, and I don't want you to get caught up and be tricked. Because if they knew the word of God, they would have never done that. Amen. Amen, somebody. And see, preachers don't want to tell you that. But this one does. Because Amen. there is a way to do it. If you can give it proportionally and what you have according to what God has blessed you with. If we look at the Old Testament, uh, there, there is a sense that people will say, you know, do I give 10% of the gross or 10% of the net? Uh, to me, whatever you give, just give it proportionally. That's between you and God. That's right. Some folks are getting nervous, Jordana. It's between you and God. But if God has given you, listen, God says if you just give me 10%, yep. Yep. you keep the 90%. That's right. <laughs> That's on that. What's the problem? <laughs> you got 90. He will only, he will only desire 10. Amen. But some folks go beyond that and give more. Yep. Because they can give proportionately. Yes. Right. I'm going to straighten it out, Elder Brown and Elder uh, Marshall. Give me a moment. <laughs> Paul says, listen, you, you've been talking about your giving over a year ago. Mm -hmm. But I want to stop by and say this to some other folks, that this is not just your finances. He's talking about giving your time, yes. your talent, yes. and your temple yes. to some part of the ministry yes. that needs your giftedness. Yes. 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 Let me show you how this works. Over the course of a few weeks, Mom Shirley, a few individuals have stepped in the line and the light and came to me and said, Pastor, I, I want to know if I, yeah, you can. Just yesterday while I was sitting meditating, uh, listening, listening to the, while well, I was eavesdropping. <laughs> I couldn't help but hear. But what I heard was, watch this, y'all gotta check this out. What
But the fellowship was so rich. The laughter and the planning and the structuring and the ideas and, and the cohesiveness and the fellowship and the togetherness. When Henrietta turned the corner on, on ministry and I looked at her and said, babe, I'm so proud of you. Not because only you and my wife, but she's not an out front person. Right. But yet two other individuals, Jay Tanks and Mom Sumter, says, we'll walk with you, sis. You ain't got to do it by yourself. That's the beauty of just giving your time, talent, and temple. It doesn't take all of you by yourself. God always going to hook you up with some people. Come on, church. Always. And them sisters, now I'm jealous. I am, Marcella. I'm jealous. What a camera, I'm all three of these now. Listen here, man. See, we, 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 we got an Esau spirit. <laughs> Unless there's food involved. Okay. <laughs> Unless we be eating something. JT, can I talk with you? That's when we show up. <laughs> we plan in a fellowship as scramblers. I guarantee you we're going to have a full house. Yep. Yeah. Amen. But when it comes time to the fourth Sunday in October, it's only going to be a few of us. Yeah. Something wrong with something. We got an Esau spirit. But the women had nearly 50%. Janice, I was jealous yesterday. <laughs> Even when JT announced, well, we were just sitting there all passing. Oh, okay. Yeah. They was clapping and loud. And... <laughs> Come on, brothers. Come on, brothers. And then yesterday, when I was almost asleep, <laughs> six thirty or so, Tim, I guess it was. I looked at my phone and, and, and Tim, Tim texted me and said, Pastor. Can I usher? That's what I'm talking about. Out of nowhere. Can I usher? Yes. Yeah, my heart went out, man. I mean, my, my heart was full. He's perfect. He's congenial. He can talk to anybody. He's smiling through the mask. You can see by his eyes going up. He's smiling. But when I noticed, he made a rookie error. He got locked out the first day. <laughs> but it's all right, baby. I love him. I love him, my man. I love him. I love him, my dude. From day none, I love him. That's right. And I still do. And Ralph, it's okay. It's okay. It's all right. Somebody gave the Bernie Mac out of it. He's going to learn. He's going to learn. <laughs> I love you, TJ. Man, I love me some Tim. He's he just so real. Yes. Amen. I wish I had more like him. Amen. There are some people in the church. Let me go back a minute and think something. Think something. Watch this. Let me get this out here. Because this is going to ask it. It makes some sense, Helen. I was turning channels yesterday, which is not abnormal. But I did a moment. And I'm, and I, and I'm nosy about football games because I'm looking for Ohio State. Yeah. I'm looking for them, okay? And, and I see 100,000 plus on every channel and every stadium, I'm surely, I turn to. Every one of them. Some with mask on, some not with mask on. There was no social distancing. I'm going somewhere, watch this, watch this. Because over a year and a half ago, they weren't allowed in the stadium. I'm going somewhere. On, and all of a sudden, as soon as we had a breakthrough with a vaccine and some whack mask wearing, all of a sudden it's safe. And God, tell me the truth right here. Why is it they can pack the stadium full when we got church folk who won't come back to church? Come on. And watch on TV. I don't know, but I got news for you. God is the truth. It's better in person to be here than online. I don't know why that is. Come on now. You, if you don't believe me, watch 80,000 this afternoon on the NFL. Yeah. They stacked faces painted. Yeah. 
Some of them ain't have no sound on them, man. Making a whole bunch of noise down there. In fact, you ain't got to go that far. Friday night, I was I was I didn't pick Central and watching them beat Bradley, and I saw folks jumping up and down and screaming, stadium full. But yet, when it comes to Sunday morning. We haven't been in church over a year, a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. And some folks are just talking about it. Mm -hmm. Coming back. <laughs> some folks are just talking about Junior. Getting back. Showing you and I ask the question, when are you coming back? Let me, and they give you a Jesus answer. One day, <laughs> like this is a Jesus question, uh, Mom Shirley. But I didn't ask a Jesus question. So why is there an answer someday, one day, soon? No, that's a Jesus question. I'm asking you, when are you coming back? That's right. <laughs> and, and so I don't, I don't want you to get discouraged. Watch what I'm about to say. Because we miss your fellowship. That's right. Amen. You have a gift or gift. Listen, you have a word of encouragement Amen. for somebody sitting here Amen. who may be going through something, yes. but they can't hear you on Facebook while you're typing a post. Yes. We miss you. Amen. We need you. Amen. Put a mask on, boo. Put a mask on, baby, and come and worship in the presence of the Lord. Yes. Come on. We need to finish what we started. I have a bishop friend in South Africa named Philip. Cheryl, you met him. Who ideally loved him, loved him, loved him. We bonded the first time we met and have kept in close contact all these years. And I desire to, to go and visit with him. And, 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 and he looked at Henrietta when we met. He says, you, my dear, no. I'd love to put you on a lion and let him uh, ride you around. Philip, Philip, you're killing Philip, you're killing Philip, you're killing, kill, 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 any opportunity or chance that this sister going to come with me. But he was, he's just that type of spirit. He's real joking. But he was dead serious. But here's what he said to me, brother. Watch this, and i got to go to the next point. Watch this, Elder Marshall. He said, Pastor, you can write all the checks you want to like, and the people can use them. He says, but besides the check, do you know what they really need? The money will come and go, and they will use it, yes. But it is your presence. Yeah. They want to talk with you. Right. They need your encouragement. Yeah. And you can be encouraged by them. It's okay to write the check. But when you show up oh. in front of them, hear me, Facebook family, Amen. it's time Amen. to get back to the church. Amen. Paul, he yeah. says, Philip says, when you show up, Pastor, yeah. Yeah. they have someone they can identify yeah. with. Someone who knows their struggle. Someone who understands. Yes, write a check, but it is you. Yeah. <laughs> and if it wasn't for COVID-19, we would have went. Or I would have went. <laughs> Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. And I gotta go. Over the last year and a half, Mom Betty, we did not have, or a little while, a couple months, let me correct it, we didn't have midweek meditation. When I announced it last week, a few people clapped and a few people were excited, but when we turned on the camera, uh, there was quite a few folks that, that were on camera and, and we were fellowshipping and we were talking. But one of the most key moments out of all we said, Marcella, uh, was, and I'm glad she's here, when Sister Janice White had a question about her salvation. Mm -hmm. So you had to be on, you had to be on it to, to be in the moment, if you remember that. 
And it took Deacon Banks his answer to the question. See, that's why you got to get on midweek meditation. Because you may have some questions about your salvation. He answered her correctly and according to the word of God. So somebody's probably saying, well, what was the question, Pastor? You should have been on long. <laughs> If you couldn't make it, I understand it, but guess what? Lord willing, we'll be back on Thursday again. And it was such an epic moment, Ralph. It was so powerful. It was so dynamic, Mom Shirley. All of a sudden, Pastor just disappeared. Quick. <laughs> gone. They're like, where'd he go? Where'd he go? Where'd he go? I thought Jesus came and got him. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Where'd he go? I just forgot to charge up the laptop. That's all. Finish what you started. I got to go. 13, when you have more than enough. The record declares Paul is not suggesting in verse 13, nor demanding that those who are in need have their needs met. Watch this. And those who give become those who are now in need. So Paul is saying, listen, that's why I talk about that Jonestown moment. Don't give up everything you have, and then you come, you're in need yourself. Mm -hmm. yes. Those who have to give should do so to ease the burden of those in need to the point that those who give or gave now find themselves in need. That should never happen. Amen. He's saying based on your abundance, Amen. let me qualify, your prosperity, your plenty, your ample, your plethora, there is enough to be given to those who are in need. It's by an equality and an effort to equalize others. By them giving to those in need, it will lift them from needing to having. It is from the surplus or the supply, the needs are met by others. Paul says, and I gotta go, when this takes place, their giving from their abundance can not only be a handout, but it also should be a hand up out of their need. It doesn't take much, church, for one to look at the history of our nation, there is a political push and pull that has been around for many, many, many years. Let me, let me elaborate. I asked my father when I was growing up, what's the difference between, and I'm going to get political, but you need to hear this in case you don't know. What's the difference between a uh, 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 Republican and a Democrat? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? I asked him because I was curious because I kept hearing it on TV, JT, and elections were around. I said, Daddy, what's the difference between those two? And in his wisdom, Miss Shirley, this is what he said, Mom Betty. He said, Republican son, have, have a standard or, or, or bearers uh, uh, that government shouldn't help people. And then he flipped, that's all he would say. And he said, the Democrats are those who believe government should help. He, he didn't say much, sure, but I got the idea. Uh, and so and it's pretty accurate, it's pretty on point. Uh, he gave his wisdom uh, in the two sentences uh, that I just gave you, and that's all he said to me. So you can imagine, and I can imagine, watch this, how great this country really could be, should be, and would be when all those who have an abundance would help or give to those who have not, somebody's witnessing, and have a need. There is now a push for equality, leveling the playing field, opportunity for everyone, education for all. There is no way a country so rich with resources, so rich with talent, so rich with diversity. I'm not running for a public office. So rich with technology. How is it there are those who are homeless, those who are hungry, those who are naked, those who are destitute, lying right outside of the Capitol in Washington, D.C. on Pennsylvania Avenue. If we would take our abundance, we could eradicate the misfortune of our fellow human beings and we'd be a super powerful Nation. How dare we call ourselves one nation under God and see others struggling with life who are less fortunate than we are. This nation has never been under God. Come on. Come on. When it sees and it knows its fellow human being is in need and won't give out of their abundance to meet the needs and bring equality to the lives in front of them. Mm. Family, we have more than enough. Mm. Who are my treasure? I'm on the last point, Gail. I heard you from up here. <laughs> this is the principle in verse 14 and 15 of reciprocity. The principle 
of reciprocity. Let me say that again. The principle of reciprocity. Paul in this section, Marcella, of our text here, what's this, John? has in mind the principle of reciprocity. He's recalling a part of history in the life of the Israelites when they were in the wilderness. Nothing to eat. And God provided for them. God sent manna for food. In Genesis 16, 16 through 18 verses, the record declares, Sandy, each person, Ralph, was allowed a certain portion of manna for the day. Some gathered much and some gathered little. Those that collected more than enough gave to those who came up short. Mm -hmm. Christina Paul believes and suggests to his listeners at this moment, uh, 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 you and I may have plenty. You and I may have abundance. You and I may have more than we need. And you and I have the ability to help someone in need. Y'all got quiet. Mm -hmm. There may come a time, time here comes reciprocity, uh, uh, Georgina, watch this. There may come a time. See, you need to touch a name, to find a name and say, neighbor. neighbor. There may come a time. Look over across the aisle and say, neighbor. neighbor. Oh, neighbor. oh, neighbor. There may come a time. There may come a day. There may come a month. There may come a year when the tables are turned. And one who had more, one who had plenty, and one who had abundance now may find themselves on the other side of the table and they need your help. It could be that same person, Elderberry, who was shown help, who was shown support, who was shown giving, and who had their need met. They're in a position to help people, Arnett, and now they need help. The tables are turned. And I know and you know that you would want someone who has and can give to help you yeah. in your time of need. Yeah. I'm out of that point real quick. <laughs> Let me close. Two words. God gives. God gives. Jay, what I love about God, one of the many things, Amanda, watch this. Watch this. Watch this. One of the many things I love about God is that he will never ask you or I to do something that he has not already done himself. Never. 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 He'll never ask us, Junior. Never ask us to do something for him. Uh, watch this. He won't ask you to do something for him when you don't possess it. He may call someone along to help you, but you still possess it. And here's a hookup to this series. They still belong to him. Your time, your talent, your temple and your treasure, they all belong to him. We don't own it. He is the owner. We are the stewards. And so he would never ask us, Jordina, to do something that we don't possess. Listen, you will never, he's never asked pastor to sing with you to praise. Yeah. I may sing along with them, but I can't sing with them. You see the difference? Yes. As long as they're singing, Jane, I'm good. But if they stop and the music going, I gotta stop. <laughs> Jordan, you've heard me a couple times. Pass one no you <laughs> huh. I'll sing along with them, but I can't sing with them. That's right. That's not my gift. So God has never asked me to join and sing. They probably put me out anyway. No, they wouldn't, she would. <laughs> No more, no less than he would ask you to stand on the sacred desk That's and right. preach a word. That's right. Amen. If he didn't call you, he's not going to ask you. Right. Tim, he called you and you responded. Yeah. Yeah. It's just that simple. Yeah. Hillary, with your gift, he called you and you responded. Yeah. He called you and you responded. Yeah. Your gift is to play the instrument. He called you to sing and you delivered. Yeah. All of us are being called. God would never ask you to do something that you don't already possess. That's right. Wow. Yes, mm. right. Mm. So, 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 watch this. Watch this. Watch this. John 3.16 now is at the table and I got to go. For God so loved the world that he gave. Stop. He gave. Stop. He gave. Out of his very best. Yes. His son, yes. that you and I, mm. that whosoever 
believeth in him That's right. should never perish, but shall have everlasting life. God gave salvation. God gave courage. God gave strength. God gave a song. God gave us victory. And because Jesus' sacrificial death, he has given us justification. He's given us peace with God. We have access to the Father. We can stand before God in grace. We are the hope of his glory. We can get through suffering and tribulation. Yeah. He is the precious Holy Spirit who lives inside of us. Yeah. We're saved from God's wrath. Reconciled to God. See, I'm not talking about houses, cars, and land. That's There's probably why ain't a whole lot of folks jumping right now. But this is... But this is what he gave us, yeah. that we're reconciled. We went from the wrong side to the right side with God. We're adopted in his family. There is redemption through his blood. There's forgiveness for sin. Thank there you, is a Lord. purpose for living. Yes. There's the righteousness of Christ. I got 45 of them, I'm going to stop anytime soon. There's a Christ in you. You have abundant life and more abundantly. You have his mercy. He gave you his grace. You have his peace. You have his long suffering. You have his patience. You have his understanding. You have the peace that passes all understanding. You have joy, unspeakable joy. We got victory over sin, spiritual gifts, future glory, great intercessors, the power of God. We have wisdom, freedom from fear, no condemnation. Yes. Hallelujah. We have an advocate. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Remember, you said it right. You can't beat God's gift. No matter how hard you try. We have all of those. I have some more, but I'm out of breath. I could talk, Jane, until Jesus came back with what he has given us. Yes. And I got one person standing. Yeah. I wish two more would just stand up and give God a hand praise for giving his only begotten son that whosoever will shall believe on him and we now have everlasting life. The word said, when we were yet without strength, Marcella, in due time, Christ died for us. We couldn't do it ourselves, but thanks be to God that even though they crucified him, laid him in the borrowed tomb. Yeah. On the yeah. third day, Mom Shirley, he got up and declared, all power, all power, all power, all power, all power, all power is now in our hands. It's in his hands. We have that same resurrection power. Yes, we do. You can get up from whatever it is. Walk and hold your shoulders square and say, I am a child of the king. Hallelujah to your land. God gives. We are grateful. Every now and then, I got to stop. Every now and then, we get a call from the Kidney Foundation. And they're collecting gently used materials for people who are less fortunate. And Tim, almost every time we have the 10 gallon trash bags that hold a lot of stuff, we'll set three of them on the curb. I'm not just telling you that because we just give them for y'all to know, but it just says that you and I have more. Some of us went through the closet and you just was rolling through the clothes like, yes. I'm going to wear that, I'm going to wear that. I'm going to wear that, I'm going to wear that. There are people who are home, thank you, Hillary, who are homeless. Right on, on Main Street. Just, just peruse on through sometime. And you'll see them. Everything they own sometimes is in a shopping cart. And we have, we have a right to chew. Her and I fight sometimes. I mean, literally, Mom, Betty, we're going to fight over what we're going to eat and where we're going to eat. What do you want? I don't know what you want. I don't know what you want. I don't know what you want. No, where do you want to go? I don't know where I want to go. If I make a suggestion, no, that's not what I want. What do you think? Well, that's not what I want. What do you think? Don't stop the nonsense. Make up your mind. That's what we, when we starve to death. But that's how good God has been to us. Because there was a time. Come on, church. There was a time 
You heard me testify before. All we ate was hot dogs. Yeah. And tuna fish. That's all we had. You just need to roll the road deck back a few minutes. Remember how far God has brought you. Just remember from which you came. You ain't got no time to have no sound face, no, no sound pussy, and, and talk about what was me. No, you ought to be grateful. Because there's somebody worse off than you and I. Always. You don't believe me? Watch the news and you see the immigrants lined up at the border. Thousands and thousands just waiting to get in this country. And the work we won't do, they'll gladly take the job. There you go. We got to know to be picking and choosing jobs and unemployed at the same time. Come on, somebody. This is just not, I want to encourage us. This is just not about our finances. This is about our time, our talent. Next week, we're going to talk about the temple. Who are we? Oh. You want to hear something now? No, you got to wait till next week. We're going to talk about the temple. And Mom, say, Mom uh, 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 Carter, there are billions of dollars spent on people trying to get their bodies right. Yeah. I'll stop right there. Amen. Oh. <laughs> Amen. For some of them, it don't work. <laughs> but God has given us so much. Stay where you are. I just need you to close your eyes and, 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 and pray with me. That there may be somebody online, somebody watching on Facebook or later on YouTube, and God has already given an answer. Just let me say this in, 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 in total. Whatever it is you're dealing with, but more importantly, God has given the answer for your sin. Somebody just said it's Jesus. There's no money. There's no material. There's nothing you can buy that can fix the sin problem. That can fix the sin penalty. That can fix the sin issue. But it is the blood of the Lamb that washes whiter than snow. If you've never said yes to Him, and God has given the best gift that could ever be given, ever, ever, ever. This is not a gift in 30 days you don't have time to give back. You don't, you want, once you have it, you won't want to give it back. You want to hold on to it forever yes. and ever yes. and ever. If you haven't said yes to him and then you're here, just slip your hand up in the air or come meet me later on or right now in the aisle. Or if you're on Facebook, just drop the drop a line on our Facebook page. New Antioch Bible Fellowship dash Reynoldsburg, and we'll be sure to respond. If you're looking to be reclaimed, some of us have been there too. We, 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 we started, but then we stopped and fell out of love with, with Jesus. Come on, y'all. Yeah, we did. We went back there. That thing didn't work. The pastor said something I didn't like. They ain't sing my song. I should took me past my seat. Somebody in my parking spot. I'm leaving the church. But I'm talking about when you have genuinely, wholeheartedly yeah. did, done a 180 and given your life to Christ. Yeah. That moment is still possible, but then you realize you want to come back home. The answer is yes. Yeah. God and Father is still waiting for you. Yeah. Yeah. Romans 8, 1 says there is no condemnation when you're in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Janice, to answer your question fully, there is no judgment mm -hmm. when you're in Christ Jesus. Yeah. That text tells us that. And someone looking for a church home. Someone want to, will you, will you want to, listen, there are three qualifications, I believe. They must be Bible teaching. They must be Bible believing. And they must be Bible living. That's the church you want to be a part of. That's someone you want to hitch your wagon to and, and, and gravitate and the fellowship. And one thing about New Anna Bible Fellowship, and I'm not being braggadocious or boastful, this was already in place when I was here and left and came back, and it's still here. It's the genuine love 
that the church has for anybody who walks through that door. Yeah, y'all do. Yeah, y'all do. Minister Fox said that to me in my ear, that I realize and I witness the love that is here in this place. And then he said, Pastor, I'll share this with you. I'll share it with CLE on Tuesday. He said in my ear, I love you. That's just genuine. It's nothing about, it's, it's the Jesus in me. That's all I'm talking about. That same Jesus is here. If anybody dare walk through those doors and you want to be a part of this branch of Zion, we will do three things. We will em embrace you where you are, we'll encourage you where you are, and we will equip you not only with our love, but with the word of God. Amen. And we'll walk Amen. with you and talk with you and Amen. fellowship with yes, you. Yes, Mr. Fox says something I gotta stop. That is true. This is a hospital. Right. Everybody here is sick. Right. This is the ICU yes. in Christ Union. Yes. This is intensive care. Yes, it is. We're in Christ's hands. We all need the physician. Yes. And one thing I know about this church, we're not perfect, but we are forgiven. Amen. If that's you, come join us. Let's close. Father, we thank you for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard. From the moment all of us got up, we anticipated you being manifested in our lives. Not simply by just waking us up, but beginning to the worship experience, God. You show up and you show out. For those, God, who may be listening or watching and need a Savior, God, let them know you are available to them. It doesn't matter where they've been or what they've done. Father, we thank you for Judah Praise. Thank you for those that serve in ministry as well. The media team and the equipment, God. The finance team. And God, most, most and more importantly, this entire membership. Who through 20-some years next month have remained faithful. Some have gone, yes, some have been, and some still here. And God, their hearts and desire is only your will, which is your word. That on this corner, we shall be a light to them that are in darkness. Now unto him was able to keep us from falling, present us faultless before his throne with exceeding joy. To him, the only wise God, our Savior, majesty, dominion, power, now and forevermore, and all the saints of God who share their time, talent, temple, and treasure. Together we say amen. 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 Give us all the hands raised. We are just here. Praise God.